Italy has always been a melting pot of cultures. As a result, throughout its history, it would be a battleground between different civilizations before one would eventually rise, defeating them all, whilst also creating one of the greatest empires in history. This is the history of ancient Italy. Italy, much like most of Europe, was first inhabited by the humans during the Ice Age, the Alps being part of a migratory route of large game animals early humans hunted. As the climate gradually cooled, people began to settle down and farm. Between 3400 and 3100 BC, one of the inhabitants of Italy was murdered by an hour wound. His body was left out in the mountains with the ice entombing him. Centuries later, this heavily tattooed murder victim was found and called Otzi. Otzi is Europe's oldest mummy, giving us the best clue as to what life was like at the time. Otzi lived during the period known as the Copper Age. This age was sparked by migrating Indo-Europeans who brought with them copper smelting. This technology quickly spread throughout Italy, as did much of the culture the Indo-Europeans brought with them. This included the building of pyramids in Sardinia. It is believed that these pyramids were religious sites, as there is evidence of an altar. Several more migrations would follow, with some migrants bringing with them the new Bronze Age smelting technology. Many of these migrants though were still nomadic hunters, although they had domesticated animals such as dogs, sheep and goats. Towards the end of the Bronze Age, the Celts migrated into the Po Valley from Switzerland, bringing their distinctive culture with them. It was towards the end of the Bronze Age that the people of Sardinia came into their own. The so-called Neuragic civilization began to thrive, becoming a central hub of trade. Trade from the Sardinians could be found in Greece, and some theorize say that the Sardinians are the mysterious Sherdan that attacked Egypt. Perhaps the Sardinians' biggest trading partners were the Etruscans of Italy. The Etruscans had huge mines that made their society extremely wealthy. Flourishing from 800 BC, the Etruscans had become the dominant power in Italy, which was by now carved up into distinctive regions. Above them were the flourishing Celts, whilst below them was the small lands of Latin and Campania. The mountain range running down the centre of Italy was dominated by the powerful Samnites. Whilst the foot of Italy became a haven for the Greek colonists, either escaping the Bronze Age collapse or setting up trade routes to their homeland. These Greeks would influence most of Italy in terms of culture, warfare and art, whilst the Celtic influence from the north would gradually meld with it, creating a very strange yet very distinct collection of Italian cultures. Gradually, the Latins found themselves being dominated by one city, that of Rome. Rome had been founded in 758 BC by two twins, Romulus and Remus. Having become the hegemonic power of the Latins, the region of Campania willingly submitted to Roman rule to prevent the Samnites from taking over their land. The resulting war with the Samnites would see the Romans gradually chip away at the other powers, eventually usurping the Etruscans as the dominant power, taking over both their lands and that of the Samnites. Wary of Rome's growing power, the Greeks in the south asked for aid from their mainland cousins, resulting in a bloody war between the two. Rome would eventually win and claim the Greek cities of Italy for herself. Having unified Italy, Rome gradually expanded, first facing the Carthaginians in the Punic War, defeating them three times capturing territory in Sicily, Sardinia, Corsica, Africa and Iberia. Rome continued to expand, transitioning from a republic to an empire, Eventually, the borders of Rome encompassed the whole of the Mediterranean and much of Europe. However, the internal struggles led to a splitting of the empire in two, with the riches from the east being cut off from the western portion of the empire. The western portion of the empire, which included Italy, began to hire Germanic warriors to fight in their armies, promising land at the end of their service. This resulted in most of the western empire's land being given away. Eventually, a Germanic king called Odoacer attacked Rome and overthrew the emperor. Odoacer became known as the King of Italy. After a fascinating period of political intrigue and backstabbing, Odoacer was lured into a banquet and killed by the Ostrogoth Theodoric, who took over his kingdom and expanded it. The Ostrogothic kingdom would last until the Eastern Roman Empire decided to finally reconquer Italy. Together with raids from the Franks and Alemanni, the Eastern Empire was eventually successful in its reconquest of Italy. However, this war severely weakened all military powers in the region, resulting in Italy splintering into various factions made up of Italians, Goths, Germans and Eastern Roman cities. 
This brought an end to ancient Italy and began the messy period known as Italy in the medieval time. Thank you for watching and listening to our videos. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. I've been the Ancient History Guy and as always, I'll be seeing you later.